So, you want to stop the squishy little wizard in the back from getting squashed. You want to be the big, bad hero who puts their body in between the enemy and the frailer members of your party. Well, I have a build that's going to work great for you. First off, you are going to want to go either the custom lineage from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything or the variant human for a feat at first level. For that feat, take Polar Master. And yes, if you are familiar with D&D builds, this is going to seem familiar, but I promise it's got its own unique spin on it. Next, when you're choosing your stats, obviously prioritize strength and con. You're going to want to hit things and hit as hard as you can, and also you want as many hit points as possible. But if you can, I highly recommend getting at least a plus one or a plus two to your dexterity. You'll see why in a bit. For your first level in a class, we're going to take fighter. And because we're a fighter, we get a fighting style at level one. And for that, we're going to take superior technique. And that allows us to choose a battle master maneuver and gives us one superiority die. And for that maneuver, we're going to choose Bait and Switch. This basically allows you to trade places with one willing creature on the map, and it's extremely efficient in terms of your action economy. All it takes is five feet of your movement. And of course, that one superiority that you have. So you only really get to do this once per short rest, but that's not really a big deal because this is a fairly situational ability. And on top of all that, you get to roll that superiority die and add that number, whatever you rolled, to either your AC or the AC of the creature that you switched places with. And that's awesome. Now take two more levels in Fighter, so we're at level three now, and that's when you choose your subclass. And for subclass, we're gonna go Cavalier, which is a bit of a non-conventional choice. I don't see a lot of people going for Cavalier, but personally, I think it's a really underrated subclass. When you take Cavalier at level three, you get a couple things that are a little underwhelming. You get an extra skill, which is nice, but you don't really get a lot of choice in what that skill is. And you also get some buffs to your mount riding capabilities, but honestly, they don't really matter since Caval for Cavalier, you don't even really need a mount. But what's going to be important is you get an ability called Unwavering Mark. And this ability is actually really, really cool because for every creature on your turn that you hit with an attack, you mark them. You're up in their face, you're being so violent they can't ignore you. So they have disadvantage on attacking anyone but you. And if they attack somebody else, you get to use your bonus action on your next turn to punish them by making a special attack that does extra damage. And this actually synergizes with Polar Master really well because you get an extra attack as your bonus action, so that is an extra creature every turn that you can mark. So the idea here isn't to be doing a lot of damage. You're gonna be doing damage as a byproduct of hitting people, but mostly you're there trying to control the crowd and stop them from hitting anyone but you. And for the next two levels, we're gonna continue into fighter because we wanna to get to extra attack as soon as physically possible. We wanna mark as many people as possible on our turns, and the more attacks we get, the more we get to do that. So now with our bonus action, polearm butt attack we can mark three creatures a turn which is pretty good and if you want to go crazy if there's lots of enemies around you can action surge and you can hit as many as five a turn and for our next level we're actually going to veer off the path a little bit we're not going to take fighter for level six we are going to take one level of barbarian specifically for rage because if we're doing our job right we're going to be getting hit a lot. And if we can get that resistance, the bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, that is going to save our lives, probably. Now, this does mean we're going to have to ditch heavy armor for medium armor, because you don't get the benefits of rage when you're in heavy armor, which does mean our AC is going to be a little bit lower, but that is why I pitched the plus two to dexterity a little bit earlier. But personally, I don't really think that's too much of a sacrifice. Our AC is going to go down one or two points, depending on what kind of armor is available. But the thing is, we're going to be taking a lot less damage. Now, you could continue into Barbarian here, but as good as Reckless Attack is, we're not really going to want people to have advantage on hitting us since we're already going to be getting hit a lot and we don't have full Barbarian hit points. And Danger Sense is definitely nice, but it's not necessary. Now, after having five levels of Fighter and one level of Barbarian, the rest is kind of up to you. Although I would recommend going to at least level 12 in Fighter for that third attack as well as that extra ASI. But for levels 14 to 20, since we've already locked off our, our level 20 fourth level attack with the one level, level of Barbarian, it's not really worth investing all of that into fighter you definitely could and we're gonna go over fighter just because I, I personally think that's probably the best choice in terms of stats and everything but you could invest further into barbarian 
or another good option would be investing at least six levels into Paladin for Aura of Protection uh, and whatever extra aura that your subclass gives you. That ties into the theme of protecting your teammates really, really well, and it would be mechanically beneficial, but personally, I'm gonna go all the way in the Cavalier. And we're gonna go into the higher level Cavalier stuff in a second, but first, I wanna go through some feats and magic items that would be really useful for this build. Let's go over feats first. Mobile is actually a really great pick for this build, specifically because of that extra 10 feet of movement that you get. You're gonna wanna be as mobile as possible on the battlefield since you never really know where the squishies are gonna be. Casters can teleport and all that, and all you got is your two feet, so you're gonna be running around a lot. And being able to uh, make an attack on someone, then run away without provoking an opportunity attack, is gonna save your is gonna save your butt a little bit. Martial Adept also has some pretty good uses, taking precision attack to ensure you're getting that mark off on somebody, uh, or getting a maneuvering attack to get your back row fighters out of uh, some sticky situations is a great idea. While it's a little bit redundant after 10th level with a specific uh, cavalier ability, Sentinel does still have some pretty good buffs, like being able to attack an enemy who disengages or attacking someone who just attacked an ally of yours within five feet. Now, I know I kind of just disregarded mounts at the beginning, but if you do have a mount that you're attached to, mounted combatant can be really, really useful. In fact, I think it's kind of essential if you want to go that route. It makes your mount way more survivable. And you are going to get hit a lot. So while it's a little boring, tough might save your life. Alert is really solid because you are the one who is protecting the squishy members of your party. So if you are surprised or if you are taking a long time to act, that's not ideal. And lastly, if you manage to get a plus three to your deck somehow, medium armor master might be a good investment. Let's go to magic items. Some obvious ones are anything that increase your important stats, specifically strength and constitution. So uh, gauntlets of ogre power, belts of giant strength, belts of dwarven kind, as well as anything that buffs your AC or your attack bonus, like uh, magic weapons, like plus one, plus two, plus three, or same with armor, plus one, plus two, plus three, or an animated shield, so you're most likely using a two-handed reach weapon. Boots of speed might be a really good idea if you don't have a mount. Again, you want to be mobile, you want to be going everywhere at once. But if you do have a mount, the Saddle of the Cavalier and Horseshoes of Speed are both great picks. Now, let's get back to the class abilities. We're going to go over all of the higher level Cavalier abilities that I think will probably be pretty useful. At level 7, you get something called Warding Maneuver, which I think is actually a great little ability. It allows your reaction to interrupt the attack of somebody attacking an ally near you. And what you get to do is you get to add a D8 to their AC which is great in and of itself, but if the attack still hits, the person who's getting hit is uh, getting resistance to that blow as well. Now, this is a reaction that competes for your use of attack of opportunity, but I think it's actually a lot better than attack of opportunity in a lot of situations, especially if you're really trying to keep a specific person alive. And hold the line is honestly a great ability, especially if you take Polearm Master. It takes some of the abilities of Sentinel, like being able to stop somebody in their tracks, reduce their movement to zero when you hit them with an attack of opportunity, and also gives you the ability to make an attack of opportunity on somebody if they move five feet within your reach. So now that we have this ability and Polearm Master, we can now make an opportunity attack when somebody enters, leaves, or moves within our reach, which is wild. It is limited to our single reaction, though. Well, for now it is. Ferocious Charger is probably the most lackluster, in my opinion. The ability to knock somebody down with an attack is great, but that can be found within the Battle Master, and they still have to fail a strength save, and you still have to hit with the attack, and it's just not that great. You have to move 10 feet beforehand. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Lastly, and this is why I think going all the way in Cavalier is a good idea, at level 18, you get an absolutely insane ability. At level 18, you get an ability called Vigilant Defender, and this ability gives you a special reaction that you can make every turn to make an attack of opportunity. Now keep in mind, this is every turn, not every round. And every monster or, or, or participant in the battle has a turn. So on all turns, if an attack of opportunity is triggered, you can make an attack of opportunity. Now this has the potential to give you an absolutely insane number of attacks uh, every round 
under the right circumstances. Obviously, this round is not super useful if you're fighting a single big monster, but if you're fighting a large group of monsters, this ability is absolutely fantastic. You can make a bunch of extra attacks, but more importantly, every time you hit somebody with one of those attacks, they cannot move. They cannot get behind you and get to the squishy party members. Hey folks, just had an addendum to add while I'm editing here. I just wanted to add that unwavering mark uh, is not limited to your turn or anything like that. So every creature that you hit with an attack of opportunity is also marked. Again, which means uh, they have disadvantage on attacking anyone except for you, as long as they're within five feet of you. Which is absolutely insane, because now you can mark an even more insane number of enemies. Ah, uh, that's all. Back to the main video. Honestly, it's just an insanely good ability. I don't know why people don't talk about it more. So there we go. That is what I think is the best build for a defender in 5th edition D&D. But that's just me. That's just me. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Are, are there other classes or subclasses that would do it better? Are there feats or magic items that would really help out here? Let me know down in the comments. I'm fascinated to know what you guys, how you guys would build this character. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it, uh, a comment, all that good stuff, all the YouTube algorithm goodness, uh, and I will see you next time.